and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, to rolls and derps alike, welcome, welcome all, I am Mullet Mike with the f***y <laughs> Paddle Gaming Network and full screen, bringing you, wait for it, Creepy Gaming. That's right, folks, if you didn't know, this is the show where we take a look at all kinds of creepy video game aspects over the years. It could be creepy Easter eggs, it could be a creepy pasta, might be a theory, or some kind of scary location, or just a review of a scary game. How about that? Who would have thunk it? Today, we are beginning a very special journey indeed, one I just really can't wait for because I love this series. I have such a love for this series. It's sickening. You can ask anybody who has been around me for the past three months. They're tired of me talking about Metal Gear Solid. So, I figured I'd talk to you guys. Y'all will at least listen to me. So, that being said, today we will begin with none other than Metal Gear Solid 1 for the PlayStation 1. Special shout out to all these fine folks right here. I want to thank you all so much. Ooh, I've been dying to play these games for you guys. So, thank you all so much for your suggestions. Be sure to keep them coming, keep them sticky, and thank you for all of your support. Well, I think I'm ready. Are you ready? How about you? You ready? 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 Old Snake? Old Snake's ready. All right. Without any further ado, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy day. Metal Gear Solid, the series that revolutionized cinematic gameplay that began to make video games the respectable form of media that they are today. With great characters, strong story elements, amazing visuals, and superb voice acting, Metal Gear Solid is one of the best examples of true modern day art, in my opinion. Now, before I kiss this franchise's ass too much, and before we delve into the creepiness, allow me a moment to say this. I never really used to like Metal Gear Solid all that much. I used to think it was convoluted, overwritten, and at times it can be, but it wasn't until I recently replayed the games in chronological order that I truly began to appreciate Kojima's vision. For those not familiar, I'm referring to Metal Gear series creator and no stranger to this show, Hideo Kojima. Now like always, especially before this 5 day event, I've gotta talk a little bit about the game's background, but I'll try to be quick about it so we can dig into some creepiness. The original Metal Gear was released in Japan on the MSX2 in 1987. This stealth-based title was a gamble and a big change of pace compared to the typical shooter games of the time. The gamble paid off though, and the game did phenomenally well, eventually being ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System. Because of the game's success worldwide, a sequel, Snake's Revenge, was released shortly after for the NES. Although this is referred to as the bastard child of the series since Kojima-san didn't really have anything to do with it. A true Hideo Kojima produced sequel was released in 1990 entitled Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Which finally brings us to our topic today and the creepiness that comes with it. In the late 1990s, when Kojima began to see video game technology grow into 3D environments, he was inspired to go back to Metal Gear. But not just simply Metal Gear, but an entirely new subseries that completely overshadowed the original. Metal Gear Solid. 
The game seems to be a semi-sequel, semi-reboot, still following the events of the original Metal Gear, but at the same time revamping a few scenes and segments from Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. The game was released in 1998 to critical acclaim and player's delight. Now here's where the creepiness comes in. The Metal Gear Solid series is a fairly grounded game, based in reality for the most part. Now, don't get me wrong, there's always been a fantastical element to the series, even more so as the franchise progressed. These games have a major creep factor to them. The eeriest is probably the fact that the story's elements aren't too far from real-world events. I mean, the whole series is based around drones for the most part, if you think about it. The story was really ahead of its time. The franchise is, of course, also known for its creepy easter eggs, as well as disturbing characters and scary locations. For example, equip your camera, snap a few photos around Shadow Moses, and you will likely see these ghostly faces. It's pretty cool, the ghosts of Shadow Moses are actually the faces of the game's development team. In the game, you play as Solid Snake, the son slash clone of Big Boss, the original Snake. In classic video game fashion, you must fight your way through some pretty interesting boss battles, but none more disturbing than your battle with Psycho Mantis. This former KGB, FBI, XOF, and Foxhound agent reveals himself to be Psycho Manus and that he has the power of telepathy and psychokinesis. He then takes control of your ally Merrill in what has to be one of the most memorable boss battles in video game history. Now originally the game came out for the PlayStation and PC. The title was later ported to the GameCube as Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. So I'll admit I originally played the Twin Snakes version. Regardless of if you own the PlayStation copy or GameCube copy, the same thing would happen for the most part. Remember me telling you earlier how the Metal Gear games always kind of broke the fourth wall? Well none more so than Psycho Manus. The game glitches up on you. Depending on what version you own, you must switch your controller to port 2, and not just that, but Psycho Manus claims he can read your mind. What happens basically is the game reads whatever you have on your memory card at the time. So when Psycho Manus says to me, I see you've been playing Super Mario Sunshine recently, I nearly shat my pants, okay? I remember being alone at the time I beat this boss. I didn't know that was supposed to happen, and I didn't think anyone would believe me. I thought I was in a real-life gaming creepypasta. That, that's a good way to put it, too. Psycho Manus was creepypasta before creepypasta was cool. Just to make the character more disturbing, not like he fucking needs it, but once the boss battle is over, the Mantis is unmasked. As we see his distorted face after defeat, you almost feel sorry for the guy. That is, until you realize he burned down his entire Czechoslovakian village and he's just a cold-blooded murderer. Pfft. So much for that, the fucks that I may have once had for you are all now gone. In closing, Psycho Manus was one of the few things in video games that really scared me. It felt too personal. I mean, this some bitch called me out for playing Mario! As I stated earlier, while being based in reality for the most part, the series has always had some fantastical elements as well. But I never expected the terror of Psycho Mantis.